recession. Okay, so last okay. year, mm-hmm. it was pretty clear, at least to most of us, that a recession was brewing. But now, mm-hmm. where <laughs> is the recession, Lynette? Well, you see, these guys are so smart that they have orchestrated a controlled implosion. It ain't over yet. Again, it just goes back to masking. You know, we talk about monetary tightening and yet conditions are as loose as they've almost ever been. So they really have been masking what's happening. I'm pretty sure for those that are living paycheck to paycheck and are having trouble feeding their family, the recession has already hit them. Yes. And when you stop and look at all the job layoffs that are happening and it's kind of masked and gosh, people are spending money, except that they're spending money on necessities because those that are in that lower echelon, that, that's what makes this so important. That's what this community piece, mm-hmm. that's what really makes it so important because we have to help each other. <laughs> we have to come together and bring the gifts that we have and share, 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 because that's the most, and that's most people, that's the most vulnerable area. That's why I did the exterior of my property and food. So somebody walking by can pick a pomegranate, can pick a zucchini, can feed their children so that they can still retain some choices and some freedoms. Hmm. I, I think it was Einstein. I think he said, I'm not sure what the third world war will be fought with, but the fourth will be fought with sticks and stones. Going all the way full circle. I was studying what I hear is th- considered the most reliable recession indicator ever. It's called <laughs> the Conference Board Leading Economic Index. Whenever it flashes recession, it's coming. It's going to happen, right? It's screaming recession, Lynette. Yeah. It, I it, mean, wasn't yeah, didn't I, Janet Yellen just go, well, the public is not just reading this inflation data right. They, they should feel so much more comfortable. Yeah, it's our fault. Are you flipping kidding me? Right. I mean, what do we know? You know, just we're the ones that go to the grocery store and buy stuff and go to the gas pump mm-hmm. and buy stuff and have to pay for medical and insurance and education and, and all of these. I'm pretty sure she's very removed from it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's the public that's got it wrong. I think... Um, I think that it's that nominal confusion, the stock market going up while the value of the currency goes down and ultimately away completely when confidence is lost. Yeah. So last year, we had a huge concern that our banking institutions were in trouble, especially those uh, uh, smaller, not too big to fail, non-globally systemic important regional banks, right? Those banks especially. And the Fed came in. And they rescued mm-hmm. them. They backstopped all the depositors' mm-hmm. money. And they called it, I think it was called the B- uh, Bank Term Funding what? Program, right? Is that right? Bank yes. Term Funding Program. But right? I think, yeah, facility. Yeah, yes. Something like that. Yes. Something that like ends. That. Yep. No more new loans after that. Okay. Nope. So well, th- because shocker, guess, guess what was discovered? That there was an arbitrage situation on the interest rates that they were paying on one and the banks could make on the other. Shocker. I mean, unintended consequences, because after all, they couldn't see that that's what would happen. That's ridiculous. These are the people that are supposed to be leading the monetary system. Mm. And and they are, they're human beings and they are fallible. Where are they actually trying to, are they ready for that big crisis? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, to your point, it could be as early as this spring where they would be I don't want to say forced to pivot because the truth of the matter is, is I think they're trying to engineer this crisis. I think they're trying to engineer it. um, And they're not stupid, right? They're not stupid. They know way more than you and I could possibly ever know because they're inside of those four walls. Are we on the verge of really, really seeing the crisis for what it is, what's rotten in our banking yes. system this year, do you think? Uh, you know, it's an election year. So I, 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 it's hard to say because if it wasn't an election year and timing is always the biggest challenge, but what we see erupting is the foundation, the very fun- foundation of the global system. And we're seeing with the 10-year treasury and the volatility and the lack of liquidity, the ability to to buy and sell it in a 
price range. Mm -hmm. It's going like this. It, it was handed over to traders in 2013. So the Fed is and has been between a rock and a hard place because this next crisis, I mean, the way that they always stimulate the economy is by borrowing because it's a debt-based system, but the debt is at nosebleed levels. Mm -hmm. All of that debt, not just government, but corporate and personal, all of that debt that's rolling over from those lower interest rates and zero interest rate policy into higher interest rates, mm -hmm. they can't afford it. And the government was already compounding interest. It's garbage when they say this is just how much we're spending on interest. I said, wait a minute, if we've only spent a trillion more than what we've taken in. Why are we servicing? This is back in 2009. Why are we servicing uh, 13 trillion in debt? Now it's way over what, 34 trillion that we know of, right? That we know of, because even that bailout was done. You know, we were hitting a debt ceiling, but somehow they managed their mechanisms to go around the system, right? To bail out these banks because they were apparently chosen not to be, uh, not to fail not to for fail, right. whatever reason. <laughs> Maybe it was too soon for the public to know about the bail-ins. I mean, that, that could very well be. I think we are going to see both gold and silver fully expressed to their true value mm -hmm. during the hyperinflation, which by the way, when you look at the monetary velocity, and I think we talked about this and I said, what I'm looking for is an upturn in a pervasive way. We got it. So I am really convinced that we have already started in that hyperinflationary trajectory. That's when the government steps in and tries to regain that confidence with gold. Look at Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is just a fabulous, fabulous example of what it typically looks like. So what, uh, a year or so ago, they came out with a one ounce gold coin, which you can afford that, just the upper echelon, right? Then they came out with a gold backed, CBDC for the masses, but you can't convert that CBDC into the underlying gold. So the masses do not trust that. Mm, it's a good point. It's a difference between backing and being able to convert it. Huge difference. Huge. So, you know, will it technically explode? Well, yeah. I mean, you could say, why isn't it 20 bucks an ounce right now with all the new contracts that they can create? And could there be some disruption? Well, we kind of saw that back in 2020, particularly with silver, right? And then what did you see? But the premiums exploded. Right. Yep. And, you know, I don't really work in that particular area, but even in this raw silver, the premiums are reflecting greater demand than supply. They changed that ETF prospectus to reflect that they didn't have to build any more baskets of silver because they couldn't get it to build the baskets. So it only has to reflect the spot price. I'm never going to count on the spot price to tell me the true value. People really don't want cash. They don't. No. They don't want dollars. And I no. might sound crazy. They don't. They want what cash, what dollars can buy them. You know? Exactly. So back to the exactly. Zimbabwe, you know, it's not the cash. So at you some can be point, a trillionaire and not be able to buy three eggs. Correct. Right. Yep. So, it, 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 but that nominal confusion, right? Oh, look at the stock market is going up, or gold and silver are going. Are you going to sell it when it goes up to there? At that point, you're going to know that these have no value. So if you do liquidate it, it's to convert it into something that has real value, I'm like income producing property or, or something like that. I'm so glad you mentioned that because again, Lynette, that is another accusation, another thing that non-stackers constantly ask, even some stackers too. What's the exit strategy, Yankee? You know, I'm going to sell my silver and gold for fiat currency and I keep I keep reminding them this. There's a reason you got out of the fiat currency system with at least a portion of your wealth. Yep. That reason not only still exists, it's probably going to be even bigger. Why would you want to put it back into that? I don't ever want to have to sell any of my silver and gold. I would rather barter it for things that really matter. Exactly.